Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York System, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. Let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales, a Nassau Community College Foundation production on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Aurora Workman. I am president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. I'm here with my friend and co-host, Dr. Linda Nadian, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College, and together we'll share stories that will inspire, uplift, and often amuse you. Each week, Aurora and I will introduce you to alumni of Nassau Community College interested in sharing their experience here at Nassau Community College along with the secrets to their success. Look for many new and exciting events on the Alumni Association social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and our web pages at www.nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash alumni. If you, our listening audience, has any positive news you would like to share about Nassau Community College alumni, engagements, births, graduations, weddings, and or accolades, email us at alumni at nassaucommunitycollege.edu and we will shout you out. Well, today's guest is Raquel Fawcett, who works with the Summer Advocacy Institute team for the American Civil Liberties Union. Every year in Washington, D.C., they meet with high school juniors and seniors that want to learn about adv- advocacy work. Welcome to Lion Tales, Raquel Fawcett, class of 2018. Thank you for having me here. Now, one of the things I want to tell our listening audience, this young lady graduated in the spring. She's very active and has remained active, I see. <laughs> She's very active on campus, as, and, and you'll learn some great things about her as we go along. But she just graduated in the spring, and so we are so lucky and grateful to have her back to talk about what she's doing and what she has gone forth to do after graduation. So, Raquel, give us some insight as to what do you do at the ACLU? So um, I work with the Summer Advocacy Institute team for the ACLU, and basically what it is is you have juniors and seniors from high schools all over the country. Um, A lot of them already have advocacy work, and we're really trying to promote that, make sure they learn how to become real advocates, become lawyers, whatever they want to be, and come back to those high schools and really share what they're learning there. And so you're fresh out of Nassau Community College, so how did you get this opportunity? To work at the ACLU? Yes. Um, I knew someone who recently got a position there, and they were looking for interns, so I decided to apply and see what would happen, and luckily I, they gave me the internship a year ago, so. Well, okay. that's good. Now, tell them, that, you know, there is such value, people don't understand, in internships, mm-hmm. and initially, you, if you start on campus, you might you you know it opens a lot of opportunities for for people. Could you tell our listening students and those who might be interested in internships? Because people hear internships and all this sudden they hear zero money. Right, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you know I don't know about that. Yeah, Wait, now, what are, what's the advantages of internship? Well, actually, a lot of internships are being paid, which is a mm-hmm. huge thing for students, especially yeah. with New York being super expensive, but. Um, Networking is the most important thing because a lot of internships are very much like not concrete. So Mm -hmm. you can really find someone who just ask them if they need an intern. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they'll say yes. That's (laughs) wonderful. And that might be Mm -hmm. worth it, too, just Mm -hmm. to get that experience in. Oh, absolutely. So you're currently majoring in political science over at Brooklyn College. Mm -hmm. And do you feel strongly about this direction in your life? uh, Or are you somewhat feeling your way through that? Um, I've always wanted to go into politic, politic, uh, politics. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so political science has definitely been something I've always wanted to go into. I've had multiple different internships in the political science field. So being where I am today, working at the ACLU is definitely something that I'm a hundred percent interested in. Well, this is going to be great because 
you notice after this past election that we've had this mm-hmm. year, so many women and young women yeah. have taken offices yeah. into in Washington. And I, you know, I just like girls rock. You yeah. know, we have that girl <laughs> power going on. And so it's really interesting to see where I used to see a lot of, you know, young men going into the political arenas. What do you think the turnover is now? Because a lot of women are now heading into the political sciences. And I'm so proud of you all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think women, I mean, we've always had a voice, of Mm -hmm. course, but I think women are really standing out now. And it's just so amazing to see from Mm -hmm. all different ages. I mean, there's so many women in high school and middle school and grown women as well that are really trying to empower themselves, empower others. And just seeing the turnout is just something remarkable. Yeah, in elementary school, we just had our student government elections, and mm-hmm. the the student body elected four female, um, l- l- I guess po- pol- politicians, <laughs> young politicians, a president, a vice, right? yes, class officer, student government, all four girls. Mm-hmm. Although there were so many boys involved, when it came down to the voting, they voted for the for the girls, and it was really exciting for us. Yeah, to see that happening and. You know, their feedback on that as, you know, young women who are interested in, you know, making some of the changes that are that are needed and in politics. Oh, it's super important. Yeah. Now, how do you feel like some of your um, work that you did here at NASA Community College? I mean, and you came in here and you became very active very quickly. Okay? <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's good because a lot of people are trying to find their way. But did you come into college saying, I'm going to do this? this is my goal for myself? How did you work that? Um, I honestly wanted to find a group of people that I could become friends with. And so deciding to become a part of the student government, being a senator first, and then, you know, meeting Demetrius and all these other amazing students here, it was, I don't know, it just made sense for me to run and become president. And it was definitely by far one of the best things I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, what were some of the opportunities you had in in the high school setting uh, prior to that? Was that something that you were doing from ninth grade? Uh, no. So I decided to do it um, here as my first time, but I was running track in high school, so that was definitely my primary right, focus so at the time. Yeah. <laughs> focus. yeah, you're a team a team player, and it's good that you know people have to you know when you're coming into college and you do have a goal to I want to expand my circles. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm glad that you had mentioned going into looking at the clubs, but you went right to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Just go right to president. Just That's like, what you do. Like, you know, I'm coming in because, you know, a lot of kids will be circumventing the student activities fair and trying to mm-hmm. figure out where their opportunity or where their interest is and things like that. Yeah. So and I guess if you did have an interest in politics, going right to student government. Was well, a sure thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you wonder, you know, what is the first thing? What does the president do? <laughs> what exactly? Yeah. What is the first thing you do when you, you know, step into that position? Right. We're going to talk about that when we come back. You're listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. I am Aurora Workman along with Dr. Linda Nadian. And our guest today is Raquel Fawcett, who works with the Summer Advocacy Institute team at the ACLU and is a proud alumnus of Nassau Community College. So we were talking about what is it the first thing you've, you've been given? Now, I want you to allow our listening audience to know what is it to become president of a student body mm-hmm. of nearly 20,000 students? <laughs> that, you know, and mm-hmm. that's big. And you're coming in and you're, and you're taking on that important role. Mm-hmm. So tell, tell them what is that like? Honestly, well, when you say it like that, with 20,000 <laughs> students, it sounds like it's a big job, which of course it was. I think my mentality is that, like, what did, what did I want to change on campus? And that was really prim- my primary focus, which was um, making sure that minority students had a voice here mm-hmm. and women as well. And I think um, we had a great women's luncheon here on campus. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of female faculty there, but it was also open to all of our female students. And then that was definitely one of our biggest events that myself and Romina and Raman, who are also on the student government with me, they also help make sure that women truly feel empowered. And I think the biggest thing is that people need to understand that, you know, wherever you are, whatever you're doing at that point, you're empowering someone else. And someone is always going to be watching your footsteps and trying to follow your goals. And so 
that was what that was definitely our biggest event and something that I have to say was really huge just being president and seeing so yeah. many women come together and just have this really big session with each other. You know, you should be very yeah. happy that they are keeping that legacy going. Mm-hmm. Right. They're keeping that um, women empowerment luncheon for meeting all the club advisors, too, and the presidents. They're keeping that going. So you should be very proud that you have made a footprint yeah. in the legacy of Nassau <laughs> Community College. I mean, you, you really should be. You know, so now you've gone on from Nassau Community College and you're working with children and under the banner of the um, American Civil Liberties. Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, how, what's the ages of those children? So the majority of them are between 16 and 18. They're juniors and seniors in high school, so they are a little bit older. Um, but yeah, They're almost close to your age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not that much older than that. So you're, you're a, a young mentor to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've been able to work with over 800 kids and, and learn their stories. You know, it's, and it's a lot because you have lives telling you their stories. Mm-hmm. What kind of, without saying names or anything, what kind of impact, what kind of stories are they telling you that makes you want to look for you to the future to make an impact in their lives? I think, I mean, honestly, the stories that they were saying, these were all personal experiences of that mm-hmm. that they had. And it was just, I mean, being able to sit there and hear these stories and they're high schoolers. Mm -hmm. Some of these stories were amazing. And then there's other stories that were so devastating to hear and to see how strong these kids are coming out of the experience that they have and then having Mm -hmm. the need to advocate for that. The juniors and seniors in high schools, it's really just amazing to see how strong they are and empowered because there aren't a lot of students that are willing to do that and we have so many around the entire country it was great (laughs) and do you find that they have a handle on politics generally because i find that my son is 18 he was Mm -hmm. upset that he had to use an absentee ballot when during voting because he was out of the state Mm -hmm. but his friends they all seem to have like a very strong handle and opinions on politics, political science in general, Mm -hmm. and how might that translate into some of the work that you're doing when kids have more knowledge or you're hoping to give them that that knowledge base to to, uh, focus on politics in the future? Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of students who do know a lot about politics, especially at this day and age, it does impact them. And I think what's greatest about the Summer Institute is that they already have so much knowledge. So we're trying to expand that and also show them how you can tell other people about the knowledge that they know. Right. What what are your expectations for them when they're in a program like that? What do you what do you hope they come away with? Honestly, I just hope they understand that there's other people out there that are supporting them. Like we see you, we hear you. I mean, some of the communities that these students are from, they aren't necessarily respected. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do judge them. And so having them come to the ACLU's program it really just shows that, you know, we ha- you have a huge back system, a huge support with you. And so, I mean, even the kids that are coming next year, it's just showing that there's so many other people that are out there that support you and definitely believe in everything that they're saying. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you find that the is a common denominator with students that you're working with? Um, I feel like they're... It's. I guess you could say uh, a common denominator is definitely that it impacts their own personal rights, mm-hmm. whether it's trans rights, civil rights, um, racism within the schools. Mm-hmm. It seems to be something that is personal to them, mm-hmm. and I think that's really the biggest issue, and it's amazing to see these students really trying to change that for mm-hmm. other students so they don't have to go through the same thing. Yeah, and there's been you know so much controversy even with a simple thing, you know, the mm-hmm. Pledge of Allegiance but right. when you say liberty and justice for all, not everyone is believing that that line is 100% true. Right. So you're listening to Lion Tales. Today's guest is alumnus of Nassau Community College and intern over at the American Civil Liberties Unit, Raquel Fawcett. My name is Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.
Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your basement. There's a pair of overalls that overall you're not so into anymore. A perfectly good laptop that hasn't sat in your lap in months. And even more stuff, but still no jobs? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed, and they're the stuff inside your stuff. Even inside that winter coat that moved with you to Phoenix. Our job is to unlock those jobs, and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation, on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman, and our guest today is Raquel Fawcett, graduate of Nassau Community College and former student government president of Nassau Community College. One of the things you mentioned that was while president, you helped mend the relationship between the athletic department and student activities. What, what can you tell us about that? Um, so based on the knowledge that I had, um, there was a previous athletic director. I don't know how accurate my information is, but what I was told is that there used to be pep rallies and they kind of stopped for a little bit. And I know there is a little division between the students that are athletes and other students that are part of student athletic, um, student activities. And so my goal was to figure out how we could pretty much put both of them together and having the pep rally, I think was our biggest opportunity to do that. Cause you could have, you know, we had the vignette come and take pictures, but we also had other clubs participating on top of the athletes that were there. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was definitely one great way to have athletes and students a part of these clubs together. And then do you see some of those lessons that you've learned while at Nassau Community College coming into play then with what you're doing now? Yeah, um, I, it definitely helped me become a team player and even lead in certain focus groups. Uh, I think the information that I've learned and gathered from NCC has definitely helped me. Um, and it's definitely something that... I can easily take. Right. So since, you know, we're on the sort of the topic of education, you told us that your education timeline was a little slower than most people, but that it hasn't really stopped you from doing what you need to be doing. So is this a big deal for some people? Or what would you say to them? Um, I think my education timeline probably wasn't a little slower. I think it's just a different route that a lot of people take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, my whole end goal was to get a bachelor's degree. So, I mean... I don't want to like influence other people, but if you want, if you know what your goal is, you can easily do it regardless of what timeline or how many right. times it takes you to get into school. Yeah, I was just speaking with someone and I think he said, well, I finished when I was 29. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know, I know someone that finished when they were 72. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it really does not matter. And so at all. I think it just depends on that educational journey and, you know, what it looks like for each individual person. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's really important, I'm sure you, you agree with some of the students you work with, is to how can you encourage them to move toward a college education, either at a, a two year school or moving into a four year? Um, how do you present that? Do they ask you about that? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that they, they have to ask themselves is what do they want? I think in our society, a lot of people feel like they have to go to college. And regardless of what you want to do, whether you like it or not, you have to go to college. And I think what people need to understand is that it really ultimately comes down to the student because the student is the one that's making these decisions themselves. They're huge life decisions. So if you want a gap year or two, take a gap year or two. If you want to know what you're doing and you already have that goal set in stone, might as well start your education. But it, it shouldn't be influenced by other people. And you should really be able to figure out on your own because this is really a decision that you personally have to make. Yeah. And what are some of the civil liberties that we actually have if, if, they, if they had to create a list of what you think that looks like? How would you explain that to, to young people? What, what do you mean? Like, in other words, 
you know, is it basic rights that we have, uh, you know, freedom of speech? Like, how is it presented by by uh, the American Civil Liberties Union? I mean, that's the, their choice to go to college or. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause, you know, because one of the things is and I hear you where you tell, you know, where people and I believe they should if they can take a gap year, take a gap year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, ultimately, too, it's not only the student, you know, who is coming in. Some students are coming in at 18, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. at the back. But there are some students who are coming in and need their parents' support financially. Right. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, which is uh, probably a lot of them. Right, which mm-hmm. is a lot of them. And, you know, now with the advent of the Excelsior Scholarship or even financial aid at the time, students can make their way, but sometimes they need their parents. And the parent wants to just say, you know, select from the blue or the red dot, you know, yeah. from my hand. Yeah, you exactly. Know? You're either going to work and mm-hmm. do this or you're going to college and I'll take care of all of this. Mm-hmm. But, you, you know, it, it and we, most, I mean, most students work and go to school for yeah, sure. Because yeah. you even mentioned that earlier that you know, working and going to school is like mm-hmm. part of your mm-hmm. part of your process daily. I mean, that was how I put myself through community college. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. working full time, paying for school. So I think oh. there are a ton of students that are also doing that, which Absolutely. is yeah. amazing yeah. to see. It and is I know important. I was one of those too. that had to do that. Yeah, <laughs> so, you I know, worked. but when because I did that. I was really, really wanted to, you know, when I was in class, I wanted to be here yeah. because I was paying my whole way. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my my father had been deceased, but my mother wasn't paying. It says, if you want it, you go get it. Right. You know, and so it really probably made me, in, in, and this is just a personal note for me, that it made me a person who wanted this education. And, mm-hmm. You know, I would get disturbed when I would be in a class that's supposed to be talking about economics and a professor would be talking about their trip to Minneapolis or something like right. that. I'm like, yeah. is this what I paid for? <laughs> I, you know, I need some I need some financial lessons, you know. <laughs> you know, and and that's nobody here at National Community College. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I I know what you're saying in terms of um, you know, when students when it's really when you really get that in your head, that go in your head that there's something I want to do and I have to look for it. Mm. And I think NASA Community College is a good way to come and at least get a taste of what every, if you're not certain. Oh, yeah. You know, to, yeah. To get a taste of what it is that you might be looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and some like of that. your favorite classes that you were able to uh, take at Nassau Community College, what, what are some that stand out for you? Um... Definitely. Uh, I took a rock music class, oh, which yeah. I thought was really fun. I'm really into jazz, and so having oh, those good. aspects. Yeah. And, and then. those new things. Yeah, it was great. And then, yeah, that was pretty much. You're I'm, listening yeah. to Lion Tales and the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Aurora Workman, along with Dr. Linda Nadian, and our guest today is Raquel Fawcett, an intern to the Board Governance in the Summer Advocacy Institute at the American Civil Liberties Union. Now, Raquel used to be here as the uh, former student government president of Nassau Community College, and she has a lot of passions, and we know that one of your passions was to fight against stereotypes of minority groups and to advocate for women's rights. Are you currently working on anything along these lines with the end? Up with the ACLU? Um, not directly. I think working with the students, they have a lot of um, stereotypes that they are fighting and a lot of women's rights that are going on mm-hmm. in high school. So definitely through them, I'm definitely trying to mm-hmm. make sure that everything is okay. And then also doing stuff here at the NASA was definitely something else I was working on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in your opinion, what are some of the best ways that, you know, that we can help advocate for a cause. How, you know, how are you, because you're young and there's a lot of different things that are coming up. But if you look at the list of, of challenges and issues that are currently going on, you can find a cartoon from back in the 70s that showed mm-hmm. that that issue was still going yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, and so what is the, your best way that um, that you find that you help advocate for causes? Um, I think... Well, by working at the ACLU, I think it's more of a personal thing that I feel like I'm mm-hmm. helping people. But you can attend rallies. There's events that people have. Even telling your friends. I mean, mm-hmm. having other people become aware of the issues in society that we do have. I think that's one. It's a great way to start. Mm-hmm. But there's rallies that are all over the country. Um and even events that you can go to, and those are definitely ways to become aware of what's going on. Right. And I think mm. there's a difference between 
stereotypical behavior and racism. And I think that that's something that um, is important that people know the differences between them because so many groups are stereotyped and and they have, you know, criteria. Oh, you're this, so you must be that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, a lot of it sometimes, you know, you see it where people sort of joke about the stereotypes, but then if it comes to something about racism, they have to really understand the difference so that we can combat that a little bit more, not just in like tolerant, tolerating something, but really having sort of an open mind to be more accepting to groups. And how might you present that to some of the young people today? Um, well, personally, I don't feel like there's much of a difference between stereotypes and racism. Mm-hmm. I think they kind of coincide with each other. So the first thing is to understand that stereotypes are stereotypes right. and they're not actually, you know, tagged with an entire group and it's not right. what the entire group stands for. Mm-hmm. And that, and those can be dangerous, which is why people need to understand that, that we should sort of move away from that stereotypical behavior and, mm-hmm. and you know, understand cultures in general. Um, yeah. And do you do any work with the students in terms of, you know, culture building and, and how... Um, you know, cultures, their language, their norms, their their uh, information is shared? Um, I mean, I feel like there's a decent amount of people that I've met, or at least in my circles and the high schoolers that I've met, that are aware that there are different cultures in our society mm-hmm. and that, you know, stereotypes are something that isn't true <laughs> at all. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so I think at this point, it's kind of just letting other people know that, right. you know, I might be black, but... It doesn't mean that I'm X, exactly. Y, Z, or any other stereotype right. than right. I am. Now, what do you see, Raquel, as um, one of the greatest takeaways from Nassau Community College that you were able to apply or that you are applying in your life today? I think the best thing was um, being becoming president. Mm-hmm. I was able to meet so many different people. There are a lot of different meetings, both good and bad. But yeah. I think even the bad meetings that we might have had, they shaped who I was, mm-hmm. and I can definitely say that, you know, experience those, experiencing those different types of things definitely helps in the future, mm-hmm. you know, dealing with future situations. Yeah. <laughs> and then were you able, like, when you left it, did you have any favorite classes that you want to tell people about, the, like the rock class? Yeah. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of people don't know. What That's was that like? So much, mm-hmm. you know? well, yeah, there's definitely a lot of different classes that you can take that aren't necessarily talked about Mm -hmm. there's so many different classes that you can easily find what you're interested in and the great thing about it is that my rock music class was a prereq for my major and so you can find something that is interesting but also goes towards your associate's degree Mm -hmm. so you don't have to take you know extra classes just to make sure that you're still interested in going and then do you find that makes you very well-rounded because you said you you know you took a rock class but you love jazz too Mm -hmm. so then you kind of get a little bit yeah you i mean now you know a lot more about music than just one thing so Right. right Well, we'd like to thank our guest, Raquel Fawcett. She is now the Summer Advocacy Institute team member for the American Civil Liberties Union. And she just graduated in the fall, I mean, the spring of 2018. She was the former president of the student government. And so we are so happy and proud that she has come back and given of her time here at Nassau. And so how can our audience contact you? Um, well, if you want to apply for the Summer Advocacy Institute, uh, the application's online, but my entire team has an entire information page on ACLU.org, and you can easily Google Summer Advocacy Institute as well. We want to thank you for being with us. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, along with my fabulous friend, Aurora Workman, president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. The creative director of Lion Tales is Rudy J. Breedy. This show is a production of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Visit nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. Lion Tales is powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.